You might have noticed this case sitting in the back for a while. This is actually the chassis I'm gonna use for the custom Tony Hawk build, um, which I've desperately gotta get started on because this whole construction thing has pushed me back and we're running out of time to get this delivered to him in the time at which we said we would do that. Um, but before we do that, I need to call out our giveaway. So many people have no idea what we're talking about when we do these codes. So anyway, today's code is J still sucks. J-A-Y-S-T-I-L-L-S-U-C-K-S. I am right now in collaboration with Micro Center giving away $5,000 shopping spree to build the ultimate gaming PC setup that you could possibly imagine available to anywhere in the world. So basically you win, I then collaborate with you on the parts and stuff that you want. You have a $5,000 budget to spend. I go pick up the parts and build your system and send it to you or send you the parts so you can build it yourself however you want. But so many people have no idea about this giveaway. So anyway, it's being drawn in just a couple of days. These are the last days to enter. So we ask that you be subscribed and you check the description down below. You guys will find a link to the giveaway uh, entry page and uh, good luck. EVGA's Z690 Classified and Z690 Kingpin motherboards are built with extreme overclocking in mind. With multiple power modes designed for sub-ambient and LN2 cooling along with robust overbuilt VRM setups, the Z690 Classified and Kingpin motherboards should be an obvious choice for extreme overclockers everywhere. To learn more, click the sponsored link in the description below. So this is the NZXT 710i. This is, you might notice, not their new one. Um, the one that has all the crazy big mesh holes in the front of it. And I specifically, dang, is this scratched? No, I think that's just, let me make sure that's, I don't, no, that's not scratched. Okay, whew, that was like adhesive stuff still sitting there. Um, I intentionally did not use, is that a scratch? Let me check, make sure these aren't scratched up. <laughs> Okay, confirm not scratches. Alcohol took whatever it was off. So anyway, we'll set this aside before I damage it. I specifically did not use the new case that has the big mesh because of the fact that then doesn't give me a solid canvas to work with. Because remember, I had this idea of it looking like a tagged up skate park back from like the 80s or 90s. And what I love about this particular chassis is the fact that it's got all these removable flat panels that I can use to do that artwork on. So I can work on these panels separate from the rest of, there we go. You have to pull hard. Oh, no. I like screamed for mercy. <laughs> but I have these flat panels that I can work with to do that artwork and then I can build separately from this or paint the chassis a custom color or something if I want. Because remember, I wanted this to look like an old either skate park slash empty pool. Skate parks didn't exist back in the 80s and 90s like they do today. They were just empty pools at like public pools that were empty in the summer or winter or whatever, and that's where they skated. So that was the whole like, skating is not a crime thing, because it was actually trespassing that was a crime, but I digress. Um, the problem with, with this is it doesn't have the airflow that you would expect because they had to clearly redesign this chassis to get better airflow because that was people's biggest issue with it. So I still have this. I still have this mounting panel that I put in the 510i Ugh. that will allow me to get some open ventilation to the front of it. And I don't actually have to mount any fans to this because one of the things that we were doing with that other chassis was we were adding fans. Um, this will allow me to just, and I can line this up yeah, I can line this up with where the two top one, 120s would go, or 140s, whatever you put in here. That way they'll, they'll line up and have direct airflow into there. So these are, these are awesome. These, I got this on Amazon. I'll try to remember to put a link down below. They're stainless steel. Um, and it, it kind of gives us that sort of like a sewer pipe look too. I don't know if sewer pipes ever had anything to do with skating, but it gives us some better airflow going in. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these parts painted and primed. I'm gonna have to get this button out of here too. Oh, that's super glued in? That's fine. I can unsuper glue it and then re-super glue it back. Not super glue, but it's like hot glued in there. So this little piece right here that just pushes down on the button that's literally sitting right here. Right, it pushes down in the middle of that or in there, wherever it is. It's just glued in there and there with hot glue. And then I can pop that out and then just put it back. That way I don't paint the button Whatever. So this is exciting because I can paint and modify this independent of the chassis. And then I can take this guy out of here 
and I can still use this, and I can have the same graffiti theme or whatever I'm doing on here. I really hope this turns out well. I've never tried any kind of a graffiti effect. It could go well, or it could look very much like a preppy white guy trying to do graffiti that doesn't know anything about like graffiti art. I mean, I know it's an art form. She should just drive down town LA and take some photos. Although then I might be putting the wrong kind of graffiti on this, which would then just start big problems, huh? Um, I also, in collaboration and talking with uh, Stone Mountain 64, uh, remember the, if you haven't seen the video yet about us talking about this, this is a, this is a project he brought to me because it was, it was he who was actually involved with Tony Hawk. We do not want to go crazy water cooled on this. And we had this discussion because we want this to be as maintainable as possible. Um, in fact, Neither Post Malone or Terry Crews have ever gotten back to me on any of my requests to like service their systems afterwards. Terry Crews' system is probably, for the most part, not been used. It's probably just been sitting there as like a display piece, which is fine. Uh, I have no idea if Post Malone's ever even actually used his computer, but I can tell you, custom water-cooled systems like that require maintenance. And we do not want to have to have them deal with the maintenance and nor do I want to have to be traveling all over the place to, to try and drain and fill these, these systems for them. So we'll probably do an AIO in this, maybe a big air, t air cooler, because this is less about the custom internals, like uh, with water coolings, but the only thing I could do custom, we are gonna go high-end. We're gonna go high-end CPU, we're gonna go high-end GPU, probably 3090 Ti, um, which means now I'm, I'm, I'm definitely triggering the launch to happen for 40 series because every single time I've ever done a celebrity build, the new Nvidia card launched right after that. So you're welcome, by the way. This is not the focus of today though. It'll, it'll be a fairly standard, clean looking build inside. This is where the theme is happening. And I've said it before, I could have easily just gone with UV printing to print something neat on there that would have looked perfect but it would have had a lot less custom touch to it. If this ends up turning out like complete garbage, I can always paint strip it and then have it UV printed. That'd be my fallback. I love cases that are put together with screws, at least as much of it as possible, especially if you want to do mods because rivets, although not that big of a deal to drill it out and then re-rivet it, just adds a layer of, there we go. And then the button just stays right there. So I can hand paint the button something custom if I want to, but now the panel is separate from this. And I'll center it after the fact. That's roughly the outline of where it'll be. And then I have to measure in so that I'm obviously cutting it inside of these holes here. And this is why I love that these panels can come off. I don't have to try and do this on a chassis. If you guys haven't noticed, a lot of what I do is just like, I figure it out as I go. If you want to see planned builds, you need to go watch Adam Savage, okay? He is the one that approaches things with a plan. He's also got decades of experience under his belt where he can literally like, you know from Hangover when dude's playing poker and all the numbers are just floating around? That's him with like engineering and design. Not me. There'll be numbers, maybe a ball of yarn goes by. A chain link fence, tractor, a dog. Like, nothing really makes sense in my head. It just sort of happens. And people ask me all the time, like, how do you come up with your build ideas? I'm like, I don't, they just happen. Whenever you're cutting anything, you wanna put down painter's tape or something as, you know, whenever you can, because that helps keep things from getting extra scratched. Like, pencil marks and stuff like that, no big deal, because we're gonna be uh, painting it. But gouges and stuff like that, that, that's a lot harder to hide with paint. So I really feel like one width of, worth of tape is perfect on the gap that I need. So I'm gonna take a just, a, just a leap of faith here and see if this is actually the proper gap. That's pretty dang good. <laughs> it's slightly wider. Remember, we have to go inside the holes anyway. And the only reason I'm even doing this right now is so that I could get it centered. But now I know if I just use this, now it's centered, right? So I need to mark where these holes are gonna be because I know I've gotta go inside of those. One of the first things we printed with the TPU material was these clamping teeth 
for my vice. That way we don't go damaging things when we go to clamp down on them. There we go. Now we're not hurting it. And now I can Dremel safely. My mods always trigger people, especially those that like actually have the proper, like if I had a CNC or just even a manual mill, just done. Which I would love to have, trust me, I want that. But it's just not in the cards yet, too expensive. By also taping off the area that I know I have to cut, it just keeps me very focused on making sure I'm on the, always on the right side of the line. That's why I always put an X on what I'm removing because sometimes I just, I just start cutting and then I realize like, oh no, that was the wrong side and it has happened. Hitting my everything. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but I'm too fat for a moving blanket. There we go. <laughs> 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 right, it's less important that this cut be perfect, like in terms of finish, because it's not it's not gonna be what you see, but I have to deburr it and clean it up, obviously. Again, it was harder up on top. Like the bottom was perfect because it didn't move. We call that adding character. Remember, like Bob Ross said, there are no, ah, wait. There's only happy little accidents. Yeah, no mistakes. <laughs> just there like, are no accidents, just like mistakes. my parents said I was. No, I wasn't an accident. My dad loved telling me how much they tried, which was very traumatizing as a kid. <laughs> ow, my knee. Oh, ow. Oh, the corner of the case went right into my meaty kneecap. Like the meaty part of your cap. No cap? <laughs> no, no cap! No cap! <laughs> there was nothing busting about that. <laughs> All right, so that fits down in there perfectly. Because what I had to account for, obviously, are these little nuts and bolts uh, and screws to fit in there. Doesn't need to be any bigger than the opening, obviously. And, you can't really see it, but they still line up with my holes that I marked for screwing it down. And then once the plastic piece goes on the back, you're not gonna see any of this cut. That's why it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, perfect. It's a little tip for you, get it, a little tip. A little tip for you guys there. Do your first holes with a small bit. And with the small bit, don't push hard. Let the, let the bit do the work. Then you can step up to a, the bigger bit. I'm also making the hole slightly bigger than the screw. That way if I am off by a millimeter or something, I can then uh, lose my bit. Ta-da! So I have to cut the plastic next. Otherwise, <laughs> great airflow, bro. <laughs> Pretty. <laughs> Courteous cut in the wilderness. Now I just gotta clean it up. Like there's no way to cut ABS clean with the tools I have. I make do with what I got, man. And this whole point of this channel has always been like showing people like what you can do with just at home with a little bit of willpower and some time, you know? Trust me, I would love to do all of this a little bit more legitnessly. But I think this is what like the old timers on my channel like to see is just the random, what wrong way is Jay gonna use a tool today? All right, so now I gotta primer this, now that this is on there and mounted up. Um, perfect segue too into changing some of these light bulbs because I've, I've got a primer and do self etch on this. I gotta clean it with alcohol right now, get any grease and stuff off of here. My hands are greasy from handling the oils and stuff in the plastic. But if I turn on the house lights here, Ugh, they're very yellow. They're 4,000 K or 4,000 Kelvin. They are LED tubes. Uh, we have um, 5,000 K, which is not daylight balance, which is 6,500. Uh, 5,000 K will be perfect for out here though. So we'll, while this is drying, we'll do a little bonus content of me going up on the lift again so you guys can all tell me how I'm doing it wrong. Um, 
so I can change out those bulbs, but let's alcohol wipe this down and make it nice and clean. I am gonna paint it assembled too, so that means the screws are gonna be painted, the grill, everything's gonna be matching. Um, because I don't see a reason to take it apart and have the screws and stuff be a different color. This is intended to be 90s grunge. So with that stated, it's gonna, it's gonna be grungy. And, and I think that's what'll make this kind of fun, you know? I, I want, when you look at this, I want it to scream 90s. I really do. And I think, and I had to paint the back of this too, obviously, so it looks nicer, but I think we'll achieve this. I've never tried this before, this particular paint style and scheme. I'm a little nervous, but that's the thing about paint. It's, especially when you're painting metal surfaces, you can strip it and start over. Remember my Star Wars build, the amazing Imperial build. One of my best paint jobs I've ever done in terms of it just being like a, a wreck spacecraft was a complete and utter failure the first attempt. You guys remember that? The, the stencil peeled the paint right off and then it, now it's turned into the best, most adhered paint job I've ever done. You cannot scratch it off if you try. You will scratch all the way down to the metal before the paint starts coming off. And I learned a lot from that particular build that I'll be taking over to this when it comes to getting the paint to adhere. An important thing is, obviously this is powder coated. Um, prep, a good paint job is 90% prep. Getting all the dirt and oils and stuff off. Isopropyl alcohol is a great way to do that. And then getting a proper etching primer to etch into the metal, especially when this is already powder coated. So, I actually don't even need etching primer on this one. I'm not gonna do etching primer now that I think about it. Etching primer on bare metal. Just a standard primer, all purpose primer on powder coated surfaces. Remember this is a paint that's on here already. This is powder coated and it was, had a, it was electrified, ion charged, so that it would get a perfect even coat with the electronic spray gun. So this, if I were to use etching primer on that, it would actually not work properly. And I, I learned that the last time I did a, I can't remember which paint, which build it was. But I did learn that and went, dang it, and I had to pull it all off. This is my new desk. This is stuff that smells good. Hey, comment down below if you also think spray paint smells good. Uh, I am wearing open-toed shoes, which is terrible. I don't have a harness on because OSHA does not require a harness if you have a proper rail system. Not to mention I just don't have a harness. It would be safer to have a harness, but it's not required. So stop yelling it at me. These are uh, high bay fixtures that already have LED tubes in them. I'm not entirely sure if, dude, it's not nearly as hot up here now that that roof is there and the returns are picking up air from there. So I think it's cooling down the warehouse better than it ever has before. But uh, I'm just gonna take out one real quick fill and I'm gonna have you turn on the light switch to make sure it lights. But you should be able to use any T8 or electronic T8, like if you have an actual fluorescent T8, these are designed to work with those ballasts. Now you need to verify that with the manufacturer, but you should be able to retrofit right to these T8 uh, LED tubes no problem whatsoever. That's bright. <laughs> it's high up enough to where I legitimately have like somewhat overcome my fear of heights being on this so much. You remember the first time I went up it when we first moved in here? I was like, ah! I had like two harnesses on. This is also the worst lift I've ever driven. It's like no null zone. Like the null zone is just huge. And the primer on this is, is dry now, so that's good. I set the primer on the backside, but um, yeah. And now you can see with the shop lights on out here, we have plenty of key light, plenty of fill. Obviously we have Phil handling the camera. And uh, I, I should have done this a long time ago. Cause I, I looked at it this way. If I'm gonna be doing shop stuff out here, we need more light. It doesn't need to be as dramatic. This is, this is definitely intended to be, you know, you can see what we're doing, what we're working on. Um, but like I said, before we end this video, because this is what I plan on getting done today, I've got to get more primer because I'm out. 
Um, the next part will be us finally doing the airbrushing and stuff. We're gonna get the uh, airbrush paints and stuff that we need tomorrow. I'll finally get my airbrush back there out of retirement. Use some of my airbrushing skills and uh, figure out some sort of a 90s grunge theme on this. But let's go see if taking the LED tube and just plug it into a T8 electronic ballast will light or not. All right, well now that I know that they're bad ballasts, I can at least work with that. Check it out. The room is done, except for the custom painting. My painter is gonna come tomorrow and paint all of our offices. I can't wait to get this put together. Yep, we already have boxes of stuff delivered that we have to, well, I delivered it myself. Anyway, so let it be known, I do some labor. But anyway, uh, we gotta put the desk together and such. Ikea hacks back here. I mean, you cannot, be you cannot beat the Ikea hack when it comes to desks and stuff. Um, back there, whole PC building area, cabinetry, maybe stainless steel desk, like it's gonna be nice, right? It's gonna be like, mm, uh, uh. But, it's a lot of work, and I have to make regular videos in the middle of all of that, so bear with us, please. Anyway, thanks for watching, don't forget, make sure you're subscribed, check out the giveaway link down below, it's only a couple days left by the time you guys see this video, and you are going to be sad if you missed out on even an opportunity. So, anyway. There you go, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.